Beat is powered by KSLSports.com. It's time. Another season of BYU football is on the way, and tonight we'll spend the next half hour getting you ready. Yeah, we interviewed nearly 30 BYU coaches and players, giving them all a chance to give you insight into the program as they embark on the final season of Independence. And as usual, they didn't go easy on the schedule, right, before they joined the Big 12. It all starts in Tampa on September 3rd against South Florida. Then they get a rematch against defending Big 12 champion Baylor, this time in Provo. A big measuring stick game for the program. There's the challenging road trip to Eugene to face the Ducks and Autzen, and then Broncos, of course, in Boise, a rivalry game against Utah State, and SEC opponents coming to Provo on October 15th, the much improved Arkansas Razorbacks. And, of course, that game against Notre Dame in Vegas stands out as well. One of the, you know, themes about BYU football the last couple of years has been play really good one game and then the next game you might have a little bit of a lull but I think this schedule challenges us to to not do that I think every single game on our schedule is is a game that you look at and it should be extra motivation I think there's you can find motivation in every single game so that's what I'm, I'm most excited about is we should be motivated and we should be ready to play every single week you might remember in August of 2010, BYU made that bold decision to leave the Mountain West Conference and embark on independence, all with the hope of one day finding a home in a major Power Five conference. It took nearly 12 years, but it happened. But before BYU joins the Big 12 next year, they still have one season left in independence, a season that they want to make memorable. I don't think we really worry about it too much, the Big 12. I mean, it's cool, but again, it's not here yet. And... What better way to start off Big 12 than having a great season this year? It's a really cool opportunity to kind of etch our name in history. You know, like the independence era will always be remembered in BYU history. It's like, well, everyone's talking about Big 12, Big 12 next year, next year, next year. And, and a, a good way to do it is acknowledge it and then let's realize that it's going to be a distraction for us. And let's push it to the side and focus on this year. That's, that's more important to me than the Big 12 is that we're going to finish out the last year of independence. This last independence season, yeah, we need to make a mark. We need to make a statement and let everyone know that, that yeah, we're coming and we're hungry. I mean, our schedule this year is, you know, just as good as any, you know, Big 12 schedule, in my opinion. So how can we have a great year this year, get to New Year's Six, you know, finish top ten? That's our goal. You think can maybe quietly make a lot of noise if that? Uh, quietly? No, we are going to make a lot of noise. Uh, the expectations is always high. This, some of the quality of teams that we've played, it's kind of like Big 12. I mean, we it's, it's nothing new to us playing these hard, tough teams. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm, I think we're as good right now. I think we're as good as anybody in the Big 12 on offense. And... I welcome that challenge. I look forward to it. And I just look at it as the best way to be ready for that when it comes is to do a great job with the season that's in front of us. You're only as good as your quarterback in college football, right? And that bodes well for the Cougars because they got a good one in Jaron Hall. He had a breakout season in 2021, leading the Cougars to a 10-3 record and wins over six Power 5 opponents, including the Cougars' first win over Utah since 2009. Jaron passed for 2,583 yards and 20 touchdowns, just five interceptions while completing 64% of his passes. He can make all the throws and make plays with his legs as well, which has the attention of NFL scouts. Most importantly, he's earned the trust as this team of this team as their leader. I mean, Jaron's been a good player from the start. I mean, I think it gets forgotten that he he was pushing Zach right to the limits. Jaron can do it, obviously. He can be that second pick in the draft. He could be that first pick in the draft. Jaron has all the tools. He's fast. He could throw. Um, he can read defenses really well. Now, Jaron, he's a, he's a smart quarterback. Uh, and some of the throws he makes are ridiculous, especially on some deep balls. And it's just like, how do you fit that in there? He's a, he's a playmaker, uh, both with the ball, running it and throwing it. Um, he has a lot of trust in us, which is which is awesome. It makes our job easy. Takes everything, whether it's good, bad, in stride. He's a super level-headed guy. He's a he's a competitor. I love it. I love competing with that dude every every Saturday, and 
um, it's just great to have him behind us. I think the year of experience really, really helped Jaron. I think he's so much more comfortable right now than he was at this point last season. Every day, it's a blessing. Um, I always say it's you against it's you against the clock, the race against time to get everything in you can. Um, I find myself the closer we get to the season every day, there's more I feel like I should be doing or more I want to do. Um, it's just it's not enough. You can't get it all in. Uh, I'm just so excited for this year. I'm excited being with my guys every single day, seeing their growth and development, um, the relationships we build. It's, it makes football, college football, what it is. You know, coaches always say to cherish it, and, and they're right. It's special. So the Cougars have a future NFL quarterback surrounded by an embarrassment of riches, playmakers at all the skill positions, depth at all positions on offense. The team is deep at tight end. Isaac Rex back from injury. Dallin Holker's proven. And more talent waiting in the wings. Then add Mason Wake and Stanford transfer Houston Hay Mooley into the mix. And the receivers, they're stacked. Leading pass catcher Puka Nakua is back. And so is Gunnar Romney, who has unfinished business. Keanu Hill, Cody Epps, Chase Roberts, and Braden Cosper are ready to break out. Plenty of weapons in the pass game for Jaron Hall to choose from. Gunner's a bona fide deep threat, and he's been one since the day he got here. With all the experience, all the all the talent that we have, I think this offense has has huge opportunity to be one of the best offenses in the country. What do you expect from Puka this year? A huge year. If he stays healthy, um, that he could he could have a monstrous season. Polish everything off. I feel like that's what it is. It's a cleanup year for me, and I feel like for our team, uh, I, I don't know how all the other guys feel, but the UAB game is something that's kind of like sat sour. A really good tight end group. Uh, we have a lot of guys who can do different things and have different strengths. So I think, you know, we'll do whatever it takes to win. You just never know when you'll go in. Like, you never know what could happen. Like, everyone's ready. We got depth everywhere. Um, I mean, some of the tight ends can go play O-line because we all got to know the calls. And The biggest question mark on offense is the running back position. Tyler Algier is now an Atlanta Falcon. How do they replace his production? It might have to be by committee. Lapini Katoa is the proven veteran. Jackson McChesney has scored touchdowns. Coaches like Hinkley Rapati, Miles Davis, and Mason Fakahua. But the likely feature back for the Cougars in 2022 is Cal transfer Christopher Brooks, a 6'1", 235-pound senior who was the Bears' leading rusher in two of the last three seasons. I would like for someone to take it over like Tyler did. I mean, it was... As a play caller, it was nice just knowing Tyler's the guy, and he's going to get stronger as the game goes on, and in the fourth quarter, he's just going to be shifting into another gear when the other team's wearing down. And would love that. Chris Brooks is going to get the first shot at that. He earned it in spring ball. And I don't know if you've seen him, but he's a pretty impressive-looking guy. Uh, I expect him to do great things. He was a very good player at Cal. And, um, you know, we're going to see what he can do. Being a coach is... That's what we do. That's you know we gotta mold and teach and groom the next guy, and and hopefully you know one of the guys will rise to the occasion and, and become the next Jamal or the next Tyler. Watch the way he lowers the shoulder and. I just went through a lot of experienced and talented players at the Cougar skill position. Several of those guys have NFL potential, but the position group with the most talent in this offense may be the offensive line, probably the most hyped offensive line group at BYU since 1996. It's easy to see why. Four of the five starters returned from last season. James Empey is the only one that graduated. And when he was hurt last year, Connor Pay stepped in and played well as a freshman. Harris Lachance, Braden Cotton, the Barrington brothers, Clark and Campbell. And there's plenty of hype around freshman Kingsley Sawamataya, the former four-star from Orem High. And their highest rated offensive lineman is offensive tackle Blake Freeland. He was a high school quarterback and basketball star at Harriman High School. He's developed into an offensive tackle with an NFL future. Really, in football terms, he's only a baby as an O-lineman. Blake is just getting to where, you know, he's played a lot, a lot of O-line, but in really the grand scheme of things, his upside is huge. I've heard it since I got here, all the, all the media stuff telling you you're good, it's just, it's just poison, you know? Uh, you can't listen to any of it, and you kind of got to prove, prove to yourself and prove to your team that uh, you're really good and all the work that you've put in has uh, paid off. At some point, you got to knock someone off the football and be a tough guy, and that's Clark Barrington. I mean, you watch that 
that third and seven against Washington State, he mauled the three technique, and that's why Tyler found that spot. It's awesome to get recognition, um, you know, but now, now I gotta live up to that, that recognition. Then you add Kingsley to that mix as well. We're, we're, we're gonna be nine or 10 deep there. The competition's gonna be fierce in camp, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if we have a couple guys that rotate during games, which, which isn't very common at O-line, but we might have some type of rotation there because we've got some good players there. It's kind of hard to believe that a team that finished 19th in the final AP rankings with six wins over Power 5 opponents had a defensive unit that ranked a mediocre 74th in the nation in total defense. The first time they were outside the top 50 since Elisa Tuiaki took over as defensive coordinator in 2016. But with the continuity on this roster, there's a strong belief it'll be a much improved product this fall. And at the center of all that, the linebacker court. 15 of BYU's top 16 tacklers from last season returned, including Ben Bywater, whose 102 tackles only trailed Utah's Devin Lloyd and Utah State's Justin Rice in our state last season. He's one of three potential NFL prospects in that group, along with Peyton Wilger and Keenan Peely, who returns from an ACL injury. A lot is expected from this group this fall. We always talk about leading the way as the linebackers. That whole group working together, I think, can really, there's a lot of expectation for leadership, for production. I think it's also nice to have that type of depth, because we're right, so I blew out my knee, Peyton, but on his shoulders, those things happen. We need to have depth. It's fun to compete against them, it's, especially, you know, it's Peyton and Keenan. Like, those are, those are the guys that I'm always lifting with. And so it's fun, you know, see those guys throw a big weight. Like, you have to do the same, right? And Whatever it is, we're always competing and pushing each other. And so it's fun to have guys that want to compete and, and, and try to be the best because it makes all of us better. But really, all the way around, we're solid. Our back end, our D-line. And we're, we're just really excited to show the world what we can do as a defense. BYU has no shortage of talented players in the defensive trenches either. Atunai Samahe, Pepi Tanavasa on the edge, Earl Tui, uh, Tuioti Mariner, just to name a few of those guys. But the one guy that impressed his coaches most this past spring, that was sophomore Tyler Batty. He led the team last fall in sacks, tied for second in tackles for loss. He was fourth in total tackles, and with a strong 2022 season, the feeling is that he could be ready for the NFL. Uh, that's that's the dream. Uh, if, I mean, if we're talking about, yeah, uh, in the in the world of football and and what can be accomplished, you know, everyone everyone wants to end up, end up in the NFL. The way he was playing this spring ball was he was playing like, okay, this is a dude. Like he's uh, the the awareness is really high, the physicality is really high, the production. I mean, just all the things that you're looking for. You thinking a guy is ready for the league? I would love for this season to be that season. Um, and of course, I'm doing everything I can uh, in my power to, to make that happen. I think he's starting to understand he's preparing like a pro. You know, and I, I do believe that he's an NFL player, and I think he's be, going to be playing football for a really long time. You know, I'll do whatever it takes, you know, to, to help our team win, man. I mean, that's, that's what we're out there working for. BYU's defensive secondary has seen its share of changes since last season ended. Cornerback Shimon Willis and Keenan Ellis medically retired. BYU added some names through the transfer portal, though, such as Gabe Judy Lolly, who started 13 of 23 games played with Vanderbilt. But it also has the steady presence of returning players D'Angelo Mandel, Jacob Robinson, Caleb Hayes, and Malik Moore, a group that wants their play to speak for itself. They were an experienced group, played a lot of games. I think what helps is the competitiveness we play with, the edge on the chip on our shoulders. Um, a, lot, a lot of guys wonderful, they got a lot to prove all the time. I mean, when you get a guy who can get all those PPUs, that shows quarterbacks, hey, you're not throwing on this side. And then you're not going to throw this side. So then what you going to do? You're going to have to run it. Quietly, no, we are going to make a lot of noise. Uh, the expectations is always high. And um, the culture is going to be changing within our DB room. You know, uh, we want to be known. We want to be heard. And uh, we're going to show it by playing football, doing our plays. We all got that chemistry built upon each other, too. So it's not like anything's going to change. The same team, same starters. Like, we just got to go out there and ball out now. The defense has improved thanks to recruiting. And recruiting is everything in college football. It's always been that way, and it'll never change. In order for BYU to compete for Big 12 championships in the future, they must recruit bigger, faster, stronger athletes. Players who have a chance to play in the NFL. It used to be a weakness at BYU. Not anymore. The New York Jets select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. 
Just in the last two NFL drafts, the Cougars have had a total of six players selected, including the number two overall pick in 2021, Zach Wilson. Compare that to 2011 through 2019, which saw just six players drafted in nine years. BYU is producing more NFL players, which is vital for the future success of the program. That's a big part of my job. Coaches shy away from that too often. If you go and ask right now, and you survey everybody that plays high school football, you're gonna get 100% of them wanna play in the NFL. And so how is that any different than college? My job is to get them to get to, to fight for it and get to the NFL and then, um, and then do whatever they can to, to get there. And then if it doesn't work out, then we have a good backup plan. I gotta exhaust all my energy and resources to make sure that they perform uh, well enough that they get a look in the next level. At the same time, we will win games and you'll have better chance to get to the NFL if this team is successful. It all is in line with what we're trying to accomplish here. And now, of course, the Cougars can't wait to join the Big 12 in 2023. But before they do, we thought it'd be fun to count down the best wins of the Independence era. Yeah, they had a one-point win in a shootout over Houston. Third string quarterback leading the Cougs past Boise State. Or maybe Kyle Van Oy's touchdown to help beat Ole Miss. You know what? Those didn't make the list. Mm. But here are the ones that did. Number five, Taysom Hill leaping over the Texas Longhorns in Austin. He passed for 181 yards and rushed for 99 more with three scores as the Cougs pummeled Texas for the second straight year, 41-7. 28 of those points came in the third quarter alone. It was Texas' worst home loss in 17 years. 50 yards away from field goal territory. A step up by Wilson. Deep man is open! It's caught by Simon! Oh, yeah, it's baby! BYU needed a miracle with 30 seconds left in Knoxville in 2019 and Zach Wilson and Micah Simon delivered that 64-yard pass completion set up the game-tying field goal and then in double overtime Tyson Williams with the help of the offensive line scored the game-winning touchdown as the Cougars walked off victorious in Rocky Top. 12 years in the making for the week to be a Cougar. Streak Busters in 2021. BYU finally tops Utah for the first time since 2009. It's only win over Utah in the Independence era. Jaron Hall passed for 149 yards, three touchdowns. He rushed for another 92 yards. Tyler Algier ran for 102 yards, and Chaz Ayu picked off Charlie Brewer to help the Cougars start 2-0 last season. The play gets off. It's head left. BYU shocked the sixth-ranked team in the country at Camp Randall in 2018. Squally Canada ran for 118 yards and two touchdowns, helping the Cougars give Wisconsin their first non-conference home loss since 2003, and it halted their non-conference win streak at 41 games. Hangham all kinds of time. Steps into the throw, in the wind, down to the goal line, and caught! Touchdown! The drama in the season opener of 2015 is unmatched in the Independence era. Taysom Hill leaves the game injured after totaling 340 yards and three touchdowns. Tanner Mangum, just a few months removed from his mission, comes in to throw the game-winning Hail Mary to Mitch Matthews. BYU fans, you've waited patiently for another season. You won't have to wait much longer. Yeah, let's the, the next two and a half minutes carry your excitement into the season. It's a taste of what's to come.
shy away from that too often. My job is to get them to get to, to fight for it and get into the NFL and then, um, and then do whatever they can to, to get there. I got to exhaust all my energy and resources to make sure that they perform uh, well enough that they get a look at the next level. Aces drop, settles, fires, goes deep for Mill, and it is caught! Oh, what a grab! And five touchdowns, you go! 